All right. What's going on here? Yeah, I got nothing, guys, so uh, if you can hear me and I can't see you, let me try, let me try this, and uh, yeah, it looks like uh, I'm going to have to try to restart this, so everybody stand by, look for a new stream to pop up here in just one second. Um, I don't think there's anything else I can try here. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to have to try to start this again, folks. I don't have any. Well, um, I guess it's, if you can still hear me, can you see me on video? Hi. This is weird. I have nothing on the screen here. <clears throat> Let me show you. So that's what I normally see, but I'll see the video in there. So I can monitor everything. Okay, well, if you guys can see me, um, I'm going to do this then. I think I'll take and just move this over here so I can at least monitor. Okay, well, we'll make that work. Um, yeah, okay, so we're going to make this work. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Sorry about the, the, um, the rough start here. But I think we'll be okay. I can kind of monitor and see what's going on. Okay, I think we're good. Uh, so, yeah, hi. Um, it's hot in Arkansas, I can tell you that. Um, as always, uh, if you have a question or you want to make a comment, just drop me a, co a, a note over in the chat window. Um, that uh, This program is driven by you and your questions, <clears throat> and we'll get to, uh, to all your comments here in a minute. But we'll say, hi, Linda, I hope you made it back in. Uh, Chuck, should, he asked a great question. Uh, should I be concerned about having an open bottle of wine in the refrigerator or unsealed liquor in the motorhome? No, not at all. As long as it's not within within reach of the driver. So if it's in a cabinet, in the fridge, wherever it might be, you're fine. Uh, but yeah, it can't be within reach of the driver. Okay, that is generally true in all states as far as I know. Okay, so I uh, hope that helps Chuck. Tom Downey is waiting. Hi, Tom. And Chuck is from Yonkers, New York. Uh, Round Town Scouter is in Columbus, Ohio. And uh, thanks, Tom. Okay, let's see. Okay, everybody can still see me. 86 degrees in Oak Harbor. That's pretty warm over there. Currently 83, where I'm normally at in Pocatello, I have a little weather widget down here on my screen. And it's 90, oh, it's down to 87 here, but that's at 45% humidity too. So it was hot today. They've got excessive heat warnings out for northwest Arkansas and southern Missouri, uh, which is where I'm near. We'll just wait a few minutes uh, for more people to jump in and... Uh, uh, so I'll do the kind of normal uh, startup, and that is to chat about my dad. He's doing fine. Um, but they locked the rehab center down. 
uh, can't go see him and haven't been able to since last Friday. Uh, they all I know is there was a sign on the door that said there's been a coat there. A, they had a couple COVID breakthrough cases. And I think what the breakthrough means is that those are people who had the, sh the shots have had their vaccine and um, uh, they got the, the COVID anyway. So uh, they've locked that place down tighter than a drum. Uh, of course, I've been talking to dad on the phone and uh, <clears throat> That's it's the way it is, um, but he's doing fine, uh, anticipating being home towards the end of the month. OK, so uh, back to your comments here, I try to read ahead and, and jump around here a little bit. Uh, is it important to remove oxidation? Where, Susan? Where's the oxidation? Um, is it like are you talking on the outside of your rig? Um, <clears throat> If you'll clarify that, then I'll be happy to answer, uh, and or or I'll answer either way. Uh, hi, Camp Gore One, Linda. Uh, how are you? How is uh, Phoenix tonight? Ivan Josie's RV journey. Hello, great to have you on tonight. No, not yet, not yet, Linda. Not home. Uh, <clears throat> won't be for probably. Well, right now I'm anticipating right after Labor Day. Fingers crossed. I'm kind of homesick. I'd like to get home and, uh, uh, well, <laughs> I miss summer. <laughs> Tom, I used to say that all the time, drier than a popcorn fart. <clears throat> oh, Melissa Brown Walls. Hi, Melissa. Um, oh, you live in Arkansas. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, my dad has lived here. He retired here after 40 plus years with Union Pacific Railroad. Um, got transferred to from Idaho to Omaha back in the 80s. And then he ended up retiring down here in the middle 90s, something like that. We're in, <clears throat> I'm in Northwest Arkansas between Harrison and uh, Springdale, uh, Fayetteville area. She says, I have a fifth wheel and when it rains, it gets wet right in front of stove and fridge. Does that sound like seals or maybe the outside vents? Yeah, I would check your vents. Uh, does your um, stove have a vent hood so if it has a vent hood then there's probably a vent to the top so yeah I would get up on the roof and I would check all my seams <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me my allergies are also out of control uh, down here because of the humidity but you want to check all the seams around the edges of the RV particularly in the area where it's wet, uh, getting wet but the water can telegraph, and what that really means is that the leak may not be right where you're seeing the water inside. It could be leaking through, and then <clears throat> through surface cling, it will cling to a surface and run for a little while. And then for some reason, it will drop and drip down there. But yeah, you want to get up and check all those seals and check all your seams along the edge. Uh, the, the seals or the seams, I should say, around all of the vents, any kind of vent penetrations through the roof. There'll be a fridge vent and those sorts of things. And uh, <clears throat> if you're suspicious about any of them at all, um, to seal the seams around the outside, a turnabond tape works extremely well, um, but it's fairly permanent. I mean, it comes off, but it's a bugger to get off once you get it on there. And then on the seams, the, la uh, the seams around your, <clears throat> your vents, excuse me for just a minute here, I, <clears throat> I'm... Uh, I'm really loaded up here and I need to uh, clear my throat and I don't want to blow everybody out. So <laughs> pardon me for just a second. <coughs> okay, I think I think I'll live. Um, you want to use a Dicor lap sealant on the roof. Never use silicone on the roof. Uh, the reason is is because when you're going down the road, things are rock racking a little bit, moving around. And silicone gets hard and it will separate as these things move around things will separate and so it's not effective at all whereas the lap sealant although it skims over right so it'll get a, a semi hard surface on it it stays pliable and loose underneath and so if anything moves around it'll flow and fill in cracks and openings that might end up between the seam and the roof and stuff like that so you can use the lap sealant around the outside seams as well um, but the turnip bond tape works extremely well. 
uh, for the seams around the outside. But yeah, you definitely want to get up there and uh, check out that roof uh, because it does sound like you probably have a leak. <clears throat> and uh, I would I would look into that. Um, now, the other question is, is that your uh, fridge and stove um, isn't sitting inside of a slide, is it? So it's not a, a section that moves in and out. It's probably fixed in position. Um, just answer me that real quick. But generally, yeah, you want to get up and check all those seams. Um, hasn't rained much lately, but boy, uh, when it rains here, it sure rains. Thank you, Melissa. That's a great question. Thank you. Uh, west of Salem, Oregon, uh, Moxarella. Hi, Moxarella. Great to have you in the chat and on the live stream tonight. If you have an RV-related question, be sure and uh, throw it in there. I'll get to you. Aaron's been working. They've changed his shift a little bit. So my normal moderator, he's been working uh, a little bit. And so, uh, but we haven't had any trouble. <clears throat> the moderator's there really to stop spammers. But we, I haven't had too much trouble with spammers, uh, which is a good thing. Okay, Dirt, Drift Fox, I hope, uh, I hope I answered your question as well. Robert Black, hi, Robert. Uh, 84 and 88 in southeast Texas. Yeah, that's like a sauna, right? It's like a sauna during the day. Um, okay, Susan Ray says, on, on the outside, fiberglass. No, uh, it just is, it doesn't harm it, um, and it just doesn't look good. Um, it's, it's, it's easy enough to remove the oxidation. Uh, there's... Uh, several products now I swear by the Meguiar's products and uh, there's actually a video on my channel of me uh, doing some work on my RV uh, using the Meguiar's products and some buffers and it's it's fairly easy to take off um, the oxidation but it doesn't hurt anything if it's on there at all um, you know it it just doesn't look good so I hope that helps Susan but the video, there is, a, I did say there was a video on my channel um, about me and how I did uh, the exterior of my RV. Uh, you can look uh, on, <clears throat> on my RV how-to playlist. It's in there, and it's probably a couple years old at this point. Okay, so Linda reports. When I say Linda, sorry, uh, some of the folks who are regulars here, I end up... Uh, getting confused. I see their online name, but then I know their real name. <laughs> but Linda is Camp Gora 1. She says, keep your fingers crossed. I don't get COVID. My daughter's boyfriend tested positive today for COVID. Uh, and he and my daughter and kids live with me. Yeah. Um, have you also had your vaccinations? Because I think that the, the, the holy grail of this COVID is to have had COVID and to get the vaccine. Um, but I don't think anybody's immune from this Delta crap. It's sure wiping out <clears throat> the southeast right now. Oh, thank you, Linda, for the referrals. Yeah, uh, uh, that's always very helpful is if you share on Facebook. Uh, if you see a video you like, share it over on Facebook. Uh, hit the like button on the video itself, and that helps a lot. When you hit those thumbs up, that ranks the video up and gets YouTube to provide it, you know, show it to more folks. Uh, if you would like to visit my website, I would appreciate that at trbolin.com. Uh, lots of content over there. Some of it's duplicate to what I have on my YouTube channel, and some of it's completely unique. <clears throat> and I've got a video coming up that I've actually started to work on uh, about getting your RV ready for winter storage. And uh, there's already a companion article that I developed before, because the way I kind of work is, is I'll write the article and get it ready for my website, and then I'll put the video together after that and use the article as sort of like a script, if you will, uh, to help me kind of stay on track. So there's already an article over there on uh, <clears throat> putting your vehicle or getting your RV ready for winter. Uh, Melissa says she's in central Arkansas. Okay, cool. Uh, maybe uh, you probably get the same weather then. Uh, central Arkansas, that's time down there by a Little Rock maybe. Huh. Well, I'm glad to have you in. Uh, I'm a temporary Arkansan. Uh, my dad lives here, and um, he fell and broke his hip, <clears throat> and I've been here since the 14th of June. I think uh, eight weeks, eight weeks tonight, I believe, is what it'll be, um, because I actually managed to get in in time to do a live stream when I first got here on Tuesday, the 14th. <laughs> Tom Downey says uh, his plums have turned to prunes on the trees. 
Well, I kind of like prunes, uh, but I've never seen him turn on the tree. No. I have, and I do, but um, I have it for a long time, Tom. The question was, do I smoke? I did for a long time, but I quit many years ago. So that's not what's causing the cough. What it is is that I'm sensitive to molds, and because of all the humidity and the moisture here in Arkansas, <clears throat> there's a lot more mold in the air. And I've been taking my normal uh, <clears throat> routine uh, for uh, allergies, and it's just not catching up. <clears throat> Sorry, so I had to add some of uh, the spray stuff today that I picked up to see if that'll help uh, with these uh, molds out here that are just killing me. Is there a humidifier you recommend for RV? Uh, if you're always in dry climates, um, I don't. I don't know if I would humidify my RV. <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me, unless you're in really super dry climates. And even when I was in Tucson, and I wintered in Tucson for five years, well, Arizona for five, but I never, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm just like completely loaded up today. <clears throat> Tonight, I should say. Um, so I don't have one right off the top of my head that I can recommend for you, Ivan. <clears throat> Hi, Sue Kelly. Great to have you in. Melissa Brown Walls. Oh, they are in the slide. Okay, then also check your uh, slide seals. And what I would recommend you do with those, Melissa, is get yourself some silicone spray. Um, CRC silicone or uh, what's the other one I like? Um, uh, Liquid Ranch silicone. Those two are the best as far as having pure silicone in them. And it's just a spray, so get yourself a nice clean cloth. Spray that cloth with a fair amount of that silicone and wipe those seals down. And what you're going to see is, is when you start to wipe them down, the, the silicone that's on the towel will end up on the seal. And if it's sucking it up a lot, and it will, especially if they're dry, then take the towel and kind of put it so you don't overspray and then take and spray that silicone directly on that gasket and... Let it sit there for a few minutes to soak in, and then go back with a towel and wipe it off. And that gasket will be on the inside surface of your slide. And then on the outside, there's going to be another gasket. There may be two on yours. And you'll want to do the same thing with it. Take the CRC silicone spray, spread either in a towel or directly on the seal, and then let it set for a few minutes and wipe it down. And that'll help soften up those seals, and that may, uh, that may seal a leak. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to check that roof. Oh, hello, Andrew. Oh man, I just remembered I got an email from you. I need to respond to, uh, from Idaho Falls. You're welcome, Susan. Wildlife Adventure Ranch from Aravaca, Aravaca. Arizona just wanted to say hi in the process of rehabbing a 91 Toyota Dolphin. Uh, you know, um, uh, Camp Gore, didn't you have a Toyota Dolphin? I had uh, also, I know uh, a guy that used to work for me many years ago. He had a little Toyota Dolphin. They're cute as heck and really cool outfits. Yeah, that's fun. Sounds fun. Jason, you are the man. I thank you so much for your super chat. It's always greatly appreciated. And of course, your questions are always appreciated as well. Um, if you have questions about RV, go ahead and drop them over there in the uh, chat window. <clears throat> okay, so here's a question from Suzanne Robertson. What's my opinion on covering my engine doghouse, engine cover with Raptor bed lining? You mean on the inside of the doghouse or on the outside? Uh, I don't think it would matter either way, but I'm not sure how it handles heat. Um, I know it's really scratch resistant, but you know, that doghouse gets hot. And so, uh, I'm not sure how it would handle heat. It might get really soft and nasty on the inside, uh, around if you know, cause the doghouse is covering that engine, but are you thinking inside or outside? Oh, uh, round town scouter. Uh, it's at trbolin.com. 
If you look in the description for the live stream, uh, you'll see a link to my website there. But it's trbolin.com. And uh, most of the RV ones should be right on the front page there. Oh, Tom Downey says, 27 smoke free here. Still have the cough. Yeah. <coughs> Crown Royal Black Label cures it. Yes, it does. Unfortunately, by the end of the live stream, if I was drinking that, I'd be blabbering. I'd be blabbering. Oh, there's Linda. She's chiming in about the uh, mold being bad. Yeah. Um, okay, so the recipe to clean the water tank again is uh, 16 parts or 16 gallons of water to one part bleach. Um, one, uh, let's see. I can't remember right off the top of my head what that ratio is, uh, but uh, there is an article on my website, and then also there is a video on my channel. Um, but if you run over to the article on the website, there's a checklist there <clears throat> that has all the information, in, uh, Linda, that you can pick up on the article on uh, clean, on sanitizing your freshwater holding tank. I actually, uh, I'm going to stop there for just a minute and chat about that because I kind of got in, well, uh, I had a guy, there's always these internet experts out there, and I love hearing from everybody, don't get me wrong. But there's always somebody out there that has a better way, a slicker way, knows a, you know, knows a guy that knows a guy that does it better than anybody kind of thing. <clears throat> and he uh, had commented on that video about how I didn't wasn't using enough bleach and said I needed to use like a cup. And, oh, my gosh, you know, it was all of this stuff. And <clears throat> what he misunderstood was is that I was sanitizing, not sterilizing. And those are two entirely different things. You do not want to sterilize. You shouldn't have to sterilize your RV's holding tank, okay? Uh, freshwater holding tank. And what the difference is, is that you put more chlorine bleach in the water, <clears throat> and that will, you know, presumably clean the tank better. Uh, but what that does is it makes it tougher to get the, uh, the bleach smell out. Uh, there is a trick to getting the bleach smell out, and that's to put some vinegar in the tank with another tank of fresh water and then flush that out. But I was sanitizing, uh, which is like you would use to clean a surface in a bar or like in a commercial kitchen. You're not sterilizing. Uh, but yeah, we went back and forth with emails on that <laughs> for like two days. Uh, but it was a great discussion. Dehumidifier. Okay, got you, Ivan. I'll get you there in just a second. Okay, um, outside Suzanne, okay. I probably wouldn't be that bad. I mean, you know, uh, the, on the outside, I think that'd be fine, yeah. I don't know why I wouldn't, you know. Um, there's, a, there's a fellow that watches the channel every once in a while um, uh, that's building a bus. Somebody help me with his name. Uh, but he, used, he, raptor, he raptor lined his whole bus. And it turned out really nice. I feel like Captain Picard here pulling my shirt down. <laughs> oh, okay. So Susan, uh, Suzanne says she steps on it to get to our seats. Yeah, I think that would be perfect. Um, I would probably use a lighter color, though, because it might show footprints. Um, I would test it uh, because it's probably going to show dirty footprints, if that bothers you. Okay, back to Ivan. He meant to say dehumidifier. Yes, I had a dehumidifier that I used in mine, and it was, uh, uh, diet, no, uh, I bought my dad one. It's sitting here at the house. Um, what was the name of it? Ivan, I will, uh, look that up, and, uh, in just a minute here, if I get to a spot where I can go look for that, because it was great. Um, the only problem was, is they have to be fairly small. Right, because I mean you don't have a lot of space in an RV, and so you were. I was dumping the cup a lot, particularly when it was really humid. Uh, but yeah, um, and it worked great. And I used it for two two winters when I was uh, doing some contract work on the East Coast, where it was really damp and humid when I was living in the RV. Thank you so much, Wildlife Adventure. Uh, I really do appreciate the super chat. You mentioned that you're out there in uh, Aravaca, Arizona. Where is that in res with respect to like Phoenix or Tucson <clears throat> or maybe Flag? 
just so I can kind of think of, you know, visualize uh, where that's at. Okay, uh, Linda says she has a 91 Toyota Horizon, pretty similar, yeah. Thanks, you're very welcome, guys. All right, so let's see where we're doing, how we're doing here. Um, yeah, if you have an RV-related question, um, throw it in the uh, chat window. Also, uh, let me know where you're watching from tonight. That's always help helpful. Uh, Andrew comes uh, says, and he uses a frigidaire dehumidifier. He used it a lot in Florida, not so much in the desert. Yeah, that's the problem with the hum dehumidifier is, is that unless you're in the area where it's humid all the time or a lot of the time, uh, they take up space, and space is at a premium when you're in your RV. Um, but I packed one around for a couple of years, and then I didn't go east again, so I actually uh, sent it to the uh, Goodwill in Tucson. <laughs> it's probably still sitting on the shelf because who in Tucson buys a dehumidifier? <laughs> 30 miles southwest of Tucson. Oh, cool. Well, I was all over that desert out there over by the Ironwood National Monument. And uh, because I spent uh, a winter at Picacho and I explored that whole section of the desert out there west of uh, I-10 and then also east of I-10. All the way over to uh, uh, well, Biodome and all of that area over in there. Uh, but that's southeast of, well, that's really northeast. And then southeast isn't the Buenos Aires National Wildlife Refuge down there. Uh, that's another cool place um, that I used to like to go down in that area. Oh, you're in Alabama, Ivan? Boy, talk about COVID Central. Yeah, I mean, I thought Arkansas had it bad, but I looked at a map today, and you guys got it really bad. Uh, then, yeah, you know, Andrew says he has Frigidaire, and it sounded like it worked good for him. Um, and so I would trust Andrew. He has been, you know, uh, a follower and friend now for quite a while. We did a project for him um, last – well, we, we've actually done a couple projects. He came to Tucson and uh, visited uh, when I was there. I guess that was two, maybe three winters ago now. And we did some work on uh, getting him set up with some disconnect switches and some other stuff. And then last last year, yeah, it was last fall in October, uh, we did an inverter install on his 04 Dutch Star. Um, and memory serves me correctly, isn't your floor plan exactly the same, Andrew, a 4010? Okay, so uh, let's see. Mox Arella, he asks, thanks for, or he says, thanks for the bio G vids. Thank you for watching them. Uh, you will find that very useful. Been camping my whole life, but brand new to owning an RV. We just bought a 76 GMC motorhome, 26 foot Palm Beach, and buying a 45 year old motorhome brings challenges. Yeah, I'll bet. Your uh, construction carpenter skills and mechanic skills are going to get put to the test there, Moxarella. But I love doing that kind of work, so I'm a little jealous. Uh, Tom, get a cheap borescope and stick in your tank. Okay. Uh, TR, do I have any suggestion for a wall for a mount for a window AC unit in an RV? I want to set one in the emergency exit window of my Eldorado and run it off my Predator. Okay, so I saw a really cool system for this. And what the fellow had done was um, he had taken and uh, he had removed the whole emergency window, okay? Uh, he had just, and his was a small one, right? Just maybe six or seven inches bigger than the AC unit he had put in his uh, rig. Let me get over here into the frame. So uh, what he did then is he just took a piece of plywood and fitted exactly into that hole where he took the emergency window out. And then he just built a little shelf, uh, a hole in it big enough that he could set the, you know, because you need a place to kind of hang the AC. And so he built it out enough. So, you know, like a normal, in your Eldorado, the walls are probably an inch and a half or maybe two inches thick. And they need to be like four and a half to six. For the art for the ac to fit right so what he did was make up the difference uh with his little window shelf so uh it worked out really well for him um and uh if i can remember here in a minute i might be able to tell you where i i read that actually in an article it wasn't uh, a video 
Uh, okay, let's see here. Larry McBride, I use baking soda after I use the bleach to remove the taste and odor. There you go. There's another one. And baking soda actually is really good stuff. Um, yeah, it's really hard to make a big mistake with baking soda. You can really use a lot of it and not cause any trouble at all. Uh, Wildlife Adventure Rat. He says he's 11 miles north of the border. His name's Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Uh, I discovered your channel looking for a cure for the stinky black tank. I use borax and so, yeah, that'll do her. Yeah, that'll take care of it for you. Um, Robert Black says he just got a Waker dehumidifier delivered today. It is square and fits in the sink, and I will run the water in the sink. What's the best humidity percentage to set it to? I would go around 30, 25 to 30. Uh, should be about right for you, Robert. Um that's normally where you would set like a home uh, dehumidifier if you had one on the, like your home uh, heating system, cooling system. Oh, okay, so uh, he's, uh, Wildlife Adventure says uh, Buenos Aires surrounds, the, uh, surrounds Arvika. Yeah, cool, okay, cool. totally know exactly where you're at. That's great country. Andrew says, he's, it started with me watching my videos on the fridge. Super helpful. Thanks, Andrew. And actually, that was my very first how-to video that I did, Series of Three. And because I've got time on my hands right now and I could find no other footage, uh, I'm actually re-editing that video down to one episode, down from three 35-minute episodes each. And uh, uh, I'm looking forward to getting that pushed out here in the next uh, couple weeks, as a matter of fact. Oh, and he says, yes, is a 4010. And what I'm talking about, 4010, is the the way Numar, uh, we have Numar, Dutch Star, 40-foot uh, Class A diesel pushers. And Numar has numbers for their uh, floor plans. And 40 is the length. And then 10, I think, is just a specific floor plan. But Andrew's done a ton of upgrades. He's got a dishwasher in his. He has really done, he's, he's really put a lot of work into his. Um and it looks great. Hi, Tim Myers. You're not late. You're right on time. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Wildlife Adventure Ranch, for joining us tonight. I do greatly appreciate that. We'll talk to you soon, hopefully. Uh, okay. Uh, he actually took and bolted uh, the uh, plywood to the frame so there's a little in, in inner frame uh you know that the emergency window rests up against uh, linda camp door and what he did was he took number eight bolts uh <clears throat> machine screws is really what they are uh rather than bolts they were screws and he probably and then he, he actually took a little piece of foam like quarter inch um uh weather stripping foam get that at home depot and he put a little strip of foam on the plywood itself <clears throat> and then bolted through the frame, through the plywood and the frame of the window. And probably it looked like a dozen places, so he just equally spaced them out. And when you bolt it down, when you tighten it down, it cr compresses that gasket, which will keep the weather out and uh, make it really secure. And then he hung the AC off of that. Oh, good evening, Aaron. Great to have you in tonight. If you do have a question, don't hesitate to ask it. Um, always happy to hear from you and get your questions. Uh, finally, it sounds like I got whatever that mold was in my chest out, so I uh, might be able to go for another few minutes before I cough up another lung. Um, but yeah, so it's, uh, it's, it's getting on towards fall and school starting. I'm telling you what. Um, it's... Time has sure flown by for me this last, uh, well, s three months. Um, but, uh, yeah. Oh, hello, Two Feathers. I got a nice comment from you that I just read just before I started the live stream tonight that I will answer short, or, you know, I'll answer after the stream. Um, so here's the deal with those. Uh, why does, she asks, Two Feathers asks, why does the RV have to be level for the refrigerator? What can happen if it's not? Okay, well, our fee refrigerators are absorption type of, of using absorption system, and they use ammonia 
uh, as the coolant, okay? And so the way they work is, is that the ammonia sits in a, in a reservoir and they boil that reservoir with the heat source, whether it be the propane or electric. And when it boils, it rises like hot air does or hot ammonia does. And what happens is it gets to the top of the fridge and it starts to condense. And that's what causes the cooling. And so as it's condensing, it's sucking the heat out of the fridge because it's going through this metal, uh, uh, you know, these metal... Uh, pipes that have fins on them that are attached to the back of the fridge. If it's not level and the ammonia is a little low, what can happen is is that it could boil dry. So, in other words, there could be a hot spot or it could boil dry inside of this boiler. And so it can cause it to shut off is essentially what will happen. Uh, curiously enough, and I'm thinking you probably all have seen an RV fridge fire. Uh, in fact, there's a video on my channel about RV fire safety uh, because I guess this was two winters ago. Um, the uh, There was a uh, Winnebago tour, 06 Winnebago tour, that had a Norcold in it that caught on fire. And that was a common problem with the Norcolds. There was a recall and they put a, you know, a super duper kit on it to uh, uh, turn it off if it got too hot. But it could, it could damage the fridge a little bit, um, or it could not cool properly. Um, so, But it doesn't have to be perfectly level, okay? Uh, it just has to be sort of level. You know, if you're a degree or three off, you know, there's some sites you just can't get level in. I mean, you don't want to be 15 degrees, but you want to be pretty level. It's, you know, five degrees either way, you're going to be fine. But, you know, or not... You know, like sitting on the curb sometimes, you know, how you're sitting on the curb and you'll be tilted over like this because the road's crowned. Um, you know, you're good to stay in those conditions for, you know, a couple hours, but you don't want to run it long term like that. Um, so it, it can damage it, but it's unlikely that, uh, you know, if you're, like I say, you don't park on a real steep slope, you'll be just fine. Two feathers. Oh, Tom Downey has the uh, Dutch Star. His is a 204080 light ash interior. Yeah, um, they're beautiful rigs. And I'll tell you what, uh, I follow uh, the the uh, all you know the Newmar forums, and I follow uh, the Newmar uh, Facebook group, uh, the Decade of Excellence, the uh, 2000s, and then the op open to all Newmar Dutch Star owners. And uh, boy, there's a lot of people having trouble with. The death head. I'm, I've been calling it the death head, D E A T H. Uh, it's all part of the death system, and those those guys of us with older rigs don't have to worry about that. But apparently, there's a big rash of them breaking down, and there's no parts available. I'm seeing things of people who are broke down in places that they're waiting three to four weeks, uh, you know, for parts to come. Uh, that can be a real drag. So, anyway. Chuck, you, you, I don't have a question. All I have to say, my friend, you sure made my newbie life easier. Thank you. That's why I'm here, Chuck, um, is to kind of maybe help you avoid the mistakes I made and uh, when I was new and, of course, offer you to ask any question. This is a safe zone. You can ask any question and uh, there'll be no ridicule. Okay, great, Larry. Thanks for the info. Uh, he, uh, Larry was uh, commenting on getting the uh, bleach, the chlorine smell, out of your holding, out of your freshwater holding tank after you treat it. And if you sanitize and you follow the instructions in, on uh, on my video or over on my webpage, um, I found that one flush with fresh water usually will get the taste and odor out. But uh, baking soda, he adds a cup of baking soda mixed in a pitcher of water, dump it in the tank, fill the tank, drive around. The block let it set for 24 hours so th that's a pretty good recipe right there uh the baking soda will help take the chlorine uh, smell out robert black 1911 asks is it okay to hang an empty portable waste tank to the ladder while traveling i'm worried about the added weight on the ladder even though it's not a lot my tank is 36 gallon rhino yeah i see guys with those things strapped on there all the time uh, i wouldn't worry about it at all those ladders are pretty sturdy um, so yeah, I see guys, uh, with those on there, uh, 
even on fifth wheels and stuff like that. So I think you're okay. You know, those ladders are probably rated for 300 pounds at least. Um, so you're, you're probably good with that. Okay, uh, Linda, I will. It was an article I read, though. Um, it was uh, it was a web article I read, um, and it's been a year since I read it. So I'll go back and see if I can dig it up in my history uh, and find that. But, yeah, it was trick and slick. He did it well. Mountain Air. Okay, great. Yeah, Tom, uh, the... I spent a winter in Denver, uh, actually in Golden, uh, and there was a fellow right behind me who had an 05 Mountaineer. It was beautiful. His was burgundy and silver, and it was just, it was beautiful. And they had, I think they had cherry cabinets, though. And I wasn't a fan of the cherry. It kind of made it too dark, especially inside of an RV like that. Uh, I'm like you. I like the lighter cabinets, minor oak, golden oak. Linda Kempbor says, I'm looking into a 42 to 50 gallon compressor type compressor 12 volt, volt fridge. Uh, okay, so uh, last week, Randy uh, Waller, okay, uh, uh, installed a 12 volt fridge in his, and he dropped a comment, and I forgot I was going to have that with me here tonight. But um, I will look that up and post it in the comments uh, on this video. Uh, but Randy put one of those in. I'm not familiar with that unit. Um, uh, 42 to 50 quart, do you mean, not gallon, uh, Linda? Andrew, he says, uh, just caution with the ladder if you're using a ratchet strap. I ratcheted mine just a bit too much, and it pulled the ladder anchor right out of my coach. Oops, yeah. So I have a story. I have a, oops, I wish I wouldn't have done that. Uh, if you... Uh, if you go back into my catalog of how-to videos, you're going to see that I have a directional antenna uh, that I use for when I'm way out in the sticks and want to get cell service. Well, I have two pieces of conduit, uh, a one-inch piece of conduit that I had um, uh, hose clamped to my ladder, and then another three-quarter inch piece that slid up and down inside of it, so it was like an antenna mast. And so I was putting that back down, I'd had it way up because I was out in Utah. Uh, I was at uh, Wind Whistle Campground um, south of Moab, and I had to get way up in the air to get a decent signal with my uh, cellular booster. And so I was putting the antenna down, and I put it into the bottom strap, and I tightened it up a little bit, and then I went up and tightened up the top one. And, man, I my ladder has a little crick in it, you know, so you come up like two steps and then, it goes up to the top, and then I took the bend right out of that ladder with that piece of conduit. <laughs> yeah, then ultimately I broke the bottom out. Um, so, yeah, be careful if you're doing uh, ratcheting things onto that thing. But, uh, yeah, if, you're using, if you use some caution, uh, you'll be good. Yeah, okay, Larry, that's great. Uh, he bought a service repair manual, best money spent. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, that's usually a, that's going to be available on the, the like the Ford GMC Chrysler chassis and stuff like that. Workhorse, uh, Freightliner and um, Spartan. I'm not sure. I actually went to Camp Freightliner uh, at the Newmar uh, Rally International Rally that was held in Pueblo. I think that was in '16. Uh, and what Camp Freightliner was was a two day class, and they gave you a book. And in that book, it uh, when you register for the class, they got the VIN for your rig. <clears throat> and so the guy that taught the class took the time to run your VIN to get all of the manuals together that were specific to your chassis and put them all in a book for you. And then you spent two days going through that, reviewing the information. So, And then over the years, I've accumulated a CAT-specific uh schematics i've got the freightliner uh, chassis schematics that i've accumulated the airline schematics all that stuff and if you have a freightliner chassis and spartan will do this too but i think freightliner is a little better uh, if you have a freightliner chassis they have a toll-free number you can call and you give them your vin 
and you say, I need this drawing or I need this information, and they're Johnny on the spot. They'll send it right to you via email. Uh, and I have used that a number of times when I've got into really tricky troubleshooting. I had a problem with some uh, uh, tail lights one time on the right side that weren't working correctly, and I had fuses all good, relays were all good, and it turned out to be a butt splice that was up in the front, but I had to chase that wire through the, I mean, it took like two days to find that problem uh, because of the of a bad butt splice uh, in the wire. You're very welcome, Robert. Thank you for uh, being a regular participant. I surely do appreciate you. Tom, he says his is gray and green metallic. Excellent. Yeah, Andrews is blue and blue metallic, silverish, really pretty. Hope Bus, thank you. Hello there. How are you tonight from Ontario, Canada? Okay, Hope Bus asks a question. Curious. What's your best and worst idea you ever heard regarding solars on the roof? Uh, the best, I think I've got a pretty good setup. Um, I have six panels. I built my own little mounts, so they're pretty close to the roof. Just enough air space to keep air moving underneath them, because remember, solar panels are sensitive to being too hot. Uh, I think the worst was Chris G., who was building a bus, and if you follow these chats, you know I'm a build nerd. Um, I like to watch people build buses and vans and stuff like that, and sometimes yell at them because <laughs> they're not doing stuff right. Uh, well, I'm watching the video, you know. Oh, you don't want to go do that anyway. Um, but Chris G had he built this really cool deck on the roof of his bus, and it had these handrails around it. And they had mounted these solar panels on these handrails vertically. Like, I'm thinking, that's stupid. That's not going to work. Um, I don't know if... they Ultimately, there was a video two or three t uh, episodes later where they were taking them off because uh, they figured out it wasn't going to work. So that was probably the worst idea. Uh, and I think another of the best ideas are... Uh, oh, they... Uh, oh, jeez. I have such a bad time remembering names anymore. I guess I'm in the first stage of dementia. Um, the Not the winds. Um, uh, it's a couple traveling in a pop-up camper. Uh, they have downsized over the years. They went from an A to a C or to a B uh, van, and now they're in a pop-up four-wheel drive. Oh, geez. Uh, they have a really cool setup for their solar. Um, which is they have a plug on the outside and they have portable panels and they can just set the panels out uh, wherever they are and increase their solar and just plug them in. Because um, in a pop-up camper, you only have so much space for solar on the roof. Uh, Roundtown Scooter asks, would bungee cords work to hold your waist tank? Yeah, if they were really tight. Um, I would feel more secure with a ratchet strap on them personally. Um, but yeah, I think a bungee cord would be fine. I see guys driving down the road with ladders on their ladders too, which kind of makes me chuckle. I totally get why. Uh, but uh, I actually bought one of those collapsible ladders uh, for my rig. But yeah, I see guys with ladders and sewage tanks and all kinds of stuff, uh, you know, strapped to their ladders as they're running down the road. Oh, I missed it. I missed something here. Just a minute. Oh, Tom Downey. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, Tim asked, is his coaching for repair seem to remember something about a bear? Uh, yeah, they got towed in tomorrow. Tech, uh oh, yeah, that's right. Um, weren't you missing a ECU a control unit, tr either transmission or an engine control? That sucks. Yeah, Tim said the same thing. That sucks. Okay, cool. That's good to know, Tom. Spartan is the same. All the schematics are online. 
Yeah, and actually with Freightliner, once you take the Camp Freightliner class, they'll give you a login, uh, and you can go in and find every part number. They give you the login to the technical information for your rig. Um, I didn't use it very much, and so it got, you know, you need to use it because they, they're pretty strict about who gets access to that thing. Uh, but it was super handy to have. Oh, yeah, Andrew agrees. Yeah, the Mountaineers are nice, aren't they? They are beautiful coaches for sure. Uh, thank you so much for the super chat, Hope Bus. You guys are the greatest. Thank you. Ivan Josie, yeah, they've been traveling in our RV for 60-plus days. They'll be home in a week. We only used our toilet and shower in the RV. I'm concerned for future leaks. What checks do I recommend before I store it? Uh, well, uh, there's a lot, and I couldn't uh, probably give you a very comprehensive list, but there is a complete checklist for putting your RV away for winter uh, on my website, trbolin.com, and uh, I believe that's over there. Uh, I'm almost positive. Yeah, 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 yeah. 18 steps for uh, uh, getting your RV ready for storage. And I talk about uh, rodent proofing, insect proofing, uh, the things, all the things you need to check. Of course, dumping all your tanks, winterizing your coach uh, if you're parked in the weather where it freezes, you know, blowing the airlines out, putting antifreeze in, all those sorts of things. That's quite a comprehensive article that you'll find on putting it to bed uh, for winter. Uh, and that's over on my website, um, 18, 18 tips for storing your RV during the winter, I think is what that article is called. Hope Bus says, right on coal. Thanks for the sharing. We're just about to plan out our roof layout. Yeah. Let me say this about solar real quick. More is better. And what I mean by that is more panels are better. Um, the thing about it is, is that Let's say, for example, my system is 1,860 watts. It's, it covers a lot of space. But the fact of the matter is, I have never, ever pulled 1,860 watts off my roof. But I have pulled 1,447, which is the maximum amount I can pull off with the solar charge controller I have. The reason I wanted a little bigger panel area, more panels, was because... You're not at peak sun, except for just a little while every day. The rest of the time, it's either over here, it's over here, it's up here, or back here, depending upon how you're parked. And your solar panels are only working at their very best when the sun is perpendicular to that panel. The rest of the time, if it's at an angle, right, you're at an angle like this, the light hits it and part of it bounces off, whereas if it's hitting directly on it most of it will be absorbed some of it will bounce off uh, but so having a larger panel increases your collection area so when you're in those lower less optimal light conditions you're still pulling in a good amount of power um, so that's why I went with a little bit bigger solar array the other thing too was is when I went to get the panels I called I got the panels down in Salt Lake uh, and I was actually putting my roof on over in Shoshone, Idaho. Uh, video on my channel around doing the roof and also on my solar. But I couldn't find any panels in Idaho. At the time, panels were sold out. Uh, what was happening was is that they were getting ready to put the big uh, import embargo on them. And so uh, I actually called down to Salt Lake. I found some panels that I wanted. Uh, but by the time I got ready to make my purchase, they'd sold the panels that I wanted. And the only thing they had were 30 watts a panel more, had more capacity by 30 watts per panel. But they were his last six. I was only going to do five, but I was able to negotiate and I got him to throw in the extra panel, the six, and got it for the same price that I would have got the five panels of the other ones for. So that worked out good in my favor. But I was also solving the problem for him in that I was taking his last six panels and if you ever been in business like that you don't ever want to have just one or two panels hanging around forever uh, it's a huge inventory problem Aaron Jameson has a great question there what RV DIY project do I feel is the best I have ever completed 
I, as far as quality goes and as far as satisfaction, wouldn't be my roof, uh, replacing the roof. As far as convenience and improving my RV life as a full-timer, it would be a toss-up between the tankless water heater and the residential fridge. Uh, so I hope that answers your question, Eric. And there's videos on my channel of all those projects. Okay, Two Feathers, a great question. Uh, when I am connected to shore power and the refrigerator is set on auto, does that mean it is no longer drawing propane to run? It should. There, all should. there also should be a little indicator light on the fridge that says you're either on AC or propane. Um, the, the way to tell for sure, just go out and turn your propane off for a minute. See if your fridge keeps running. Just go out there and turn the valve off and then leave the fridge run. And if, if you run out of propane and the fridge senses that, it should alarm at you. Uh, and that would tell you for sure, for sure, if you're running on propane. But if you're on auto, it should be running off your AC power, yes. Robert Black, ladders on ladders. Yeah, that's funny, but it is a good idea. I see that a lot. You'd be surprised. Robert Black, thank you for the super chat. Uh, very greatly appreciated. Oof. Ouch. Tom Downey says, it's so much fun getting towed at $300 per hour. It is 45 miles off the island. Wow. Plus the ferry cost. Yeah, Tim. Wow. 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 That is... Oh, that gives me... I'm coming to visit you. Uh, what was her name? Uh, Fred Sanford's wife. <laughs> Elizabeth. I'm coming to visit you, Elizabeth. Uh, okay, uh, Russell Bailey, have two freshwater tanks with one fill point. I assume one tank fills, then the second. How do I get bleach into the second tank? That's a really good question. Um, I think what you would do is um, you would bleach the first tank um, to... Okay, so here's how I would do that, assuming that they're filling off of each other. Um, I would set... Use Okay, say you have 100 gallons, but it's 250-gallon tanks. Then I would make my concentration for 100 gallons, and then I would just fill it through the normal way that you fill your tank. Okay, uh, and that would fill the first tank, and then presumably that chlorine bleach solution would continue to dilute and move into the second tank. Um, so that's probably the way I would do that, and um, I think it would be close enough. I don't think you have to worry about it too much. Tom Downey says, yeah, I don't use antifreeze. I blow the water system out and remove the filters. Yeah, and if you have the right gear to do that, I know that uh, uh, I've seen uh, Camco makes these little adapters that you can screw into your water line that looks like a, uh, you know, uh, uh, air valve. Uh, yeah, an air valve. What do they call that? Valve stem uh, that you can pressurize and blow those, uh, blow your lines out. And that works great, too. Um if you have a compressor and that sort of stuff. So, yeah, that's good. Hi, Crystal. Great to have you in. Late or not, doesn't matter. Uh, okay, thanks, Crystal. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I'm glad to have you back. Well, thank you for Hope. Thank you, Hope Bus. Um, that's uh, very nice of you. Thank you. We have a bridge. We have a ridge. That could be a song. Oak Harbor to Mount Vernon is Highway 20 over the bridge. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's see. What time are we at? Oh, we just hit 9 o'clock. I usually try to keep these for an hour uh, with plus or minus 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, never less than an hour, it seems like. So if there are any other questions, be sure and throw them over there in the chat window. Uh, say... Uh, shameless selfish plug uh, your support of my Amazon store is greatly appreciated there's a link in the description below and uh, 
you know, I get a very small commission from Amazon when you use the store, uh, and you paid the exact same price, and uh, every little bit helps. Um, as a side note, I had this question come up last week, and I never really thought about it, but I absolutely do not know what people buy. All I see is something was bought, a box of Barax, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, well, there's all kinds of stuff. I mean, not to be too gross, but people have bought the condoms. <laughs> people have bought, um, you know, uh, 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 dishwasher, wheel chocks, uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, even uh, had a fellow last month buy an air conditioning unit uh, through my Amazon store. And so, you know, it's, but I have no idea who bought those. Uh, it's completely anonymous uh, from my point of view, and your support is greatly appreciated. Also, those thumbs up, uh, that's very helpful as well. And if you're not subscribed, I do uh, invite you to subscribe. Uh, I do these uh, live chats every Tuesday at 7, uh, Mountain Time. And uh, I'll probably keep doing them for quite a while. Thanks, Andrew. Great to see you. Uh, take care. Tell your mom and dad hi for me. Oh, yeah, Tom and uh, Aaron was up in that area as well. Uh, and I know Highway 20 really well because it runs through Idaho as well. I used to have to drive it all the time. That's the road to uh, Yellowstone National Park. Great. Okay, so last call. We'll throw it around out for uh, any more questions, comments. As always, thanks everybody for the great super chats. You know, I really do greatly appreciate that. I just can't say thank you enough. Also, uh, for the uh, participation in the chat window, uh, that's always very appreciated. And uh, hope to uh, see you guys all next week. So I think we'll call her good and say good evening. Until we get together next week, peace. Bye-bye.